8.1 simple interest or linear growth of your money. So this is um, the first section in the finance section of your textbook, the last chapter. Hooray, you're almost finished the course. And in it, we're going to talk today about the simple interest, which is, um, it's not an interest that's used often. Most banks will use some sort of compounding interest. Even mortgages are compounded but semi-annually. And that just means um, the simple interest, you don't get interest paid to you on the interest that you've learned earned. So we'll see that as we go into the, um, the compound interest in 8.2. So let's just look at this really basic idea of simple interest. And in this chapter or this section, there's some important terminology that you need to know that you will be applying in, uh, in subsequent sections of this chapter. So make sure that you understand what you're talking about. So here I've got some definitions, the principal, the principal, yeah, not the principal, the school, but the amount of money that you have invested. So let's say you've got, um, you've got a check for your birthday and it's $500. That's the principal amount. You put it in the bank, it earns interest. Now, simple interest, which is what we're talking about here, is just interest that is paid only, only on the original amount invested. It's not the interest you want if you're putting money into the bank and trying to, to gain some interest. But it would be great if you were on the lending or the borrowing side of the money. If you're borrowing money, it's great if it's only simple. But like I will learn that it's generally compounded with some uh, frequency. So interest is the money that you earn on an investment or the cost of borrowing money. So you put money in the bank and you check your bank account and you've made some money and that is the interest that you earn on your money. The amount in this case is capital A in the equations refers to the total value of the investment or loan. So this is after you've done your calculation. How much will I have if I do this? So the first example we're going to look at is just very basic. It's going to say, okay, I have $1,000. I put it in the bank and I'm investing it at 5%. Now this line means per and the A stands for annum. So this means per annum and an annum refers to, this is year, right? One year is one annum or annually. You might hear somewhere along the way annually. Um, so per annum, that's just this little a per annum for five years. So if you put the money in and let's just look at what happens to your money, just basic. So if you just put it in, you haven't put it in there for any time, you just dropped it in the bank, you have a thousand dollars. After one year, you would have interest of fifty dollars. So how we determine that is we can use this equation here, I equals PRT. So the interest earned is going to be the principal, which is a thousand times the rate. Now, when you have the rate of 5%, you know 5% means if you got 5% on a test, heaven forbid, you would have five out of 100. And that means it's 0.05. So you must convert this percentage to a decimal very easily done by just dividing by 100 per cent, per cent. Cent means 100 in French, right? So I have 1,000 times, so let's write the equation, I equals P times R times T. T is your time. Principal amount is 1,000. The rate, 0 0.05. The time, five years. So this is annually. So this is okay, we just put a five here, times five. And if you look here, what's happening, so the interest earned is going to be, um, well, this is the interest earned over the full term of five years, right? So this amount here is going to give you, let's get the calculator out so you can watch as we do it. So we have a thousand times 0 0.05 times five, and we get 250. So $250 is the amount that we've earned over five years in interest. And if you look at my little chart here, we get $50 each time. So 5% of $1,000 is $50, 
Okay, so if you look here, if I just did a thousand times 0 0.05, I get, whoops, I forgot the zero. A thousand, we need three zeros, times 0 0.05, and we get 50. So that's $50 every year you make 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 dollars. And here is my total amount. So I'm only adding $50 every year to the amount that I have invested. So using the second formula, so this is the interest and the amount that we would have after five years is the principal. Again, it's a thousand times one plus the rate 0 0.05 times the time, which is five years. So if you do that on your calculator, you'll get 1250. So as you can see, this is not complicated. It's linear. If I drew a graph of this, right, I would start at a thousand and I would go up $50 a time. So 50 would be my slope, right? I'm going up by $50 every year. Very boring. You don't want that kind of growth. You want exponential growth because you want your money to grow faster, right? Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. This is probably the easiest and, and probably the least used type of, of financing with simple interest, but you still have to understand how it all works. So how much interest would you pay if you borrowed $720 with a simple interest rate of 22%, oh, it should it be a slash A, per annum? for 65 days, okay? So my rate is in years, my term is in days. So 65 days, you're gonna to have to write that in terms of a year. So how many days in a year? Hopefully you know that there's 365 days in a year. We don't worry about the quarter and that's the ratio you're going to need to use to figure out your interest. So the amount of interest earned, I equals P times R times T. So my principal, this is my principal right here, right? This is your principal, principal. It's the amount, in this case, you're borrowing the money. You're not investing it, you borrowed it. So the principal is 720. My rate, 22%, don't forget to switch it to a decimal. So 22% equals 0 0.22 as a decimal and the time 65 over 365 days. So if you multiply that all out, I'm not going to waste time on the calculator, you get 2821. And so therefore, the question didn't ask you this, but let's say how much would you have to pay back? You would pay and all you're going to do is add this. Um, so add 2821 to this, that gives you $748.21. Okay, so that's solving for the interest first and adding it to the principal to get your total amount. Or you could have used the other equation, but this, this question asks you for the interest. So that's the question, the equation you would use. But if it just said, how much will you pay back? You could have used this equation, one plus RT, and that would have given you 720 times one plus 0 0.22 times. Make sure you do the multiplication before you add the one like that. And if you do that, you're going to get the same answer over here, 748.21. Okay, so you can see this is pretty easy stuff. You should be able to ace finance. It's money. You love it. You love money. If you need $5,000 to buy a used car and you invest $2,800 at 8.3% 8 per annum, it's important that when you're doing your math that you, you can read the question because sometimes just reading it helps you to understand what all these things mean. Simple interest. How long will you need to wait? So you need 5,000 to buy a car. So using our formula, I'm gonna write it over here, A equals P times one plus R times T. 
the amount I want is 5,000. So this is a future amount, right? I want $5,000. So that's going to go here in my equation. So the A is 5,000. Always a really good idea to write like a little box of information that you already know. You're going to invest $2,800. So what letter does that represent in this equation? Well, it's the P, right? So this is your A, this is your P, the principal amount. So P equals 2,800. You're investing at 8.3% per annum. Now don't make a mistake converting a percentage to a decimal. You, if you have any problem at all with this, get out your calculator and divide by 100. Don't make the mistake of getting the wrong decimal or putting the decimal in the wrong place. So this is 0 0.083. Okay, so this, so this is 8.3 divided by 100. Move the decimal over two places and that gives you this. So I want 5,000. I have 2,800 to put in the bank. And I want to know how long is it going to take. So that means I'm solving for t here. So 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.083 times t. So in order to solve for t, I need to expand this little bracket first. So 5,000 equals 2,800 plus... Now if I multiply this times this, I'll just magically tell you the number. It's 2, oops, 232.4 times t. So now all you have to do is rearrange the equation. So I'm going to subtract 2800. So 5000 minus 28, that's going to give me 2200 equals 232.4 t and then I'm going to divide to find t. So all you have to do here now is divide by this on both sides and I get t is equal to 9.466 years. So if your teacher says in years that would be your answer so you'd say maybe approximately nine and a half years or if you want to know exactly how many days, how many days is 0.466 of a year? So, or nine years and, so I'll take this 0.466 and multiply it by 365 because that's how many days there are in a year. 365 times 0.466 and I get 170. So nine years and 170 days, excuse me. Okay, so that's pretty much what simple interest is all about. It's very easy, it's linear growth, and as opposed to the next lesson where we're going to be doing like an exponential growth, which is the best way to make money off of your money. There you go, lesson one, a few more to go.